Hi guys, we're here for our December Bible study and it's called The Main Event. And you can see here we've got a little picture of the nativity, which is what we call when we have little figures set up that look like baby Jesus and his mom Mary and his dad Joseph and like they're sometimes in a stable, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they have shepherds, sometimes they have wise men, but it's when we just are kind of have a some kind of picture or figures of the Jesus story of his birth, right? Okay, so it's a pretty good time of the year to celebrate, right? We're gonna celebrate this whole month. All during this month, we have something called Advent where we're getting ready for Christmas. It's not Christmas yet, but Christmas is coming, and boy, are we excited about it. Last week, we lit the candle of hope, and this week, we're going to light a new candle. You'll have to watch church and see which one it is, because I'm pretty sure something cool is gonna happen. Okay, but we can celebrate God's plan, and that is what we are going to do all month long is celebrate God's plan. Now, are you good at making plans? Because sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. And sometimes a plan kind of looks like a map. Have you ever tried to draw a map? Like, let me think about this. So I could make a map from the church where I am to my house, okay? So the church is kind of like a weird tan color on the outside. So I'm gonna make it orange. You know, our church is shaped funny. So it's like kind of this weird shape. Well, let me start over here because we have to go the right direction, right? That's one thing in the, on a map too. We gotta make sure we're going the right direction. We got north, we got south, we got west over here and east over here. All right, so we have the church with our weird shaped churches over here. We've got all different buildings now. There's our church, okay? And then we've got this one. Putnam Avenue in the front and Virginia Avenue on this side. And maybe some of you guys go to um, Connor Street over here. It's over here, Connor Street Elementary, okay? But if you go down Virginia Avenue, you're gonna find lots of things, right? You're gonna find lots of houses. Right now there's a house with lots of exciting things in the yard. There's uh, US Foods. You know, and if you keep on going, you're gonna go to Milton. There's, way down here, there's Food Fair. And somewhere, so we're past the church pinch myself. So somewhere past the church in Connor Street, past U.S. Foods, but not all the way to the food fair store is my house. So that's not the best map. It could get you near there, but you don't know what street I live on. You don't know exactly how far between U.S. Foods and my house it is. And then, you know, there's another U.S. Foods place down the way where they like park their trucks and I didn't mark that at all. And you could get confused and think, well, which one is she talking about? There's this one, there's that one. So this really isn't a very good map, is it? Oh dear, I'll try again later. So, sometimes having a plan and having a map are a little bit alike. You have to have a good plan. And for me to know where I'm going, I need a better map than that, right? Well, luckily for us, God has given us a kind of a map. He's given us directions and instructions here in the Bible. But even at the beginning of Jesus' story, God made sure that his plan was known. So our stories today come from uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, and that's where the Mar Mary gets vis visited by an angel and learns all about Jesus. And then also in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24, and that's when 
Joseph gets visited by an angel. I'm not going to read all of them today because you're going to get, you're going to hear these at some point. I promise. And maybe some of you are working on these for some kind of project that's going on. But so what happens is that Mary, even her, one of her cousins is having a baby. She's visited her cousin, you know, she's heard about her cousin. She's excited for them. And then all of a sudden, blam, this angel, this shiny white angel just appears to her. And she's like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Because Mary wasn't that old. She was kind of young. And she was like, I don't know what's going on. And, and the angel says to her, oh, hello, the Lord has blessed you and is with you. Now, remember, this is way back before Jesus, you know, was born. Well, not way back at this point, right? Just before Jesus was born. But before they had the Holy Spirit, they're not used to just God talking to them all the time. And she's like, what are you talking about, me? And they tell her how important she's going to be to the whole world. And she's like, here I am. I'm your servant, and I will do this. And she even praises God. If you read um, in chapter 1 of Luke, verses 46 through 56, it's Mary's song about how she's grateful for the things that she knows is going to happen because Jesus is coming. Well, we can't forget about poor Joseph. I feel like maybe the angel forgot that he was supposed to go talk to Joseph because I feel like Joseph got filled in a little too late <laughs> in this whole story. But so, Joseph, if you're reading in Matthew, verse, or chapter 1, verses 18, 18 through 24, Mary was now pregnant, and Joseph was supposed to be married to her, or he got married to her. Back then, their marriages were like this whole long thing, like you kind of got engaged, but you were actually married, but then you had this whole long, you had this whole long process to get married. It wasn't just like one day. But anyway, so he finds out she was pregnant. He's like, oh, no. What's going on? Like, how's she having a baby? I don't even know. And so an angel goes and visits Joseph and lets him know what's getting on, like, what's going on, okay? Like I said, I really feel like somebody should have told Joseph a little sooner. Poor Joseph. But he realizes, okay, yeah, no, this is huge. I get to help raise and care for God's only son, like, Let's do this. How blessed are we that I have this great wife. I'm going to have this cool baby. God loves us so much. He's like, let's do this. But if that angel wouldn't have come, if God hadn't shared his plan with them, who knows what Mary and Joseph would have thought was going on. All right. So how do you think sending an angel getting a message from an angel is kind of like having a map. Well, they're not very much alike, are they? But they did tell Mary and Joseph where they were going a little bit. They knew that big things were coming down the line in the future. They knew that big things were going to happen in their lives. And that's just kind of like having a map or a plan. And that's how God wants us to live, is to follow the map, the plan that he has for us. We don't make our own map. I didn't do a very good draw, draw on this map, and I go to my house every day. So you don't want to follow my map. I mean, I could probably make you a map if you really needed to get there. But it's never going to be as good as God's plan for my life or God's plan for your life, right? No. God has the perfect plan. And if you, we're going to look all the way over into Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 20 and we're going to talk about exactly how important Jesus coming was to the plan of the whole world okay and I'm reading from the ICB it says it has a little title it says the importance of Christ no one has seen God but Jesus is exactly like him Christ ranks higher than all of the things that have ever been made through his power, all things were made, things in heaven and on earth, things that are seen and not seen. All powers, all authorities, lords and rulers, all things were made through Christ and for Christ. 
Christ was there before anything was made, and all things continue because of him. He is the head of the body, and the body is the church. You know, like how we'll sometimes say, like, we are the church. Yeah, and, and Jesus is the head in charge of it. Everything comes from him, and he is the first one who was raised from death. So in all things, Jesus is most important. God was pleased for all of himself to live in Christ. And through Christ, God decided to bring all things back to himself again. Things on earth, things in heaven. God made peace by using the blood of Christ's death on the cross. All right, so let's go back to that verse. Let's see. Verse 19, it says, God was pleased for all of himself to live in Christ. Which means that even though Jesus was completely human, he was also completely God. He wasn't just kind of half and half, and he didn't kind of fit in in the world, and he didn't fit in with God. No, he was 100% human, just like me and you, but he was also 100% God, which means that he had all of the power. He could have done really big things here on earth, but that took faith out of what he was supposed to do. Like, if he just made us believe, then that's not faith, right? Okay, and verse 20 says, And through Christ... God decided to bring all things back to himself. All things. So remember with Adam and Eve at the very beginning, and they were just living their life in the garden until they decided to not listen, and then they had to go out of the garden, and their lives just got harder, and things just got harder from there, and harder and harder. But through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, which means the anointing, which is the blessing and the power of God, and we can all be anointed with the Holy Spirit and Jesus in our lives. So we can all have that power because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we have a connection to God, and he has a map, a plan, some guidelines to help us get back to be with God always 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 isn't that amazing and that my friends is why we can celebrate God's plan because God gave us the best gift of all when he sent us Jesus he sent us a way to be connected back with him he sent us a way that we can be connected to the big plan that he has for our lives and the whole world and that's a pretty great reason to have a party all right my friends we have a new Bible verse. It is Luke 1, and it's verses 46 and 47, and it's not very long. It's up here, and it says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. All right? So let's break it down. It says, My soul glorifies, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in my God and Savior. Now, I'm going to do another video where I break this down, but I'm going to show you the sign language, okay? So if I'm doing it too fast, I'm going to make another video. So it says, my soul, my soul glorifies the Lord, glorifies the Lord, and my spirit, and my spirit rejoices in God rejoices in God, my Savior, Savior, okay? My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So we go open and down. We used to do that. We did that in a song. I'm pretty sure it was last year, but it could have been the year before. So save, like out, and then down. So like salvation we did, but then to you, the person. He's the person that saves, right? Okay, so my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And that is Luke chapter 1, verses 46 and 47. Now, before we go, we have to pray. You know how that is, my friends. So this is the moment that I want you to kind of open up your heart and think about the things you want to say thank you for, things that you need help with people that you want to pray for who are having, you know, a hard time or are sick or whatever you need to pray about and hold it in your heart, open up your mind and just remember that God hears you whenever you pray. Let's pray. 
Dear God, thank you so much for sending Jesus to us so that we can celebrate the wonderful plan that you have for our lives so that we can be connected with you and just know all the great things that you have for us if only we listen and follow you. God, thank you for these children and their families and everybody listening. You hear their prayers. You know what they need help with. They, you know what they are thankful for. God, you hear us always. You love us so much. Help us to spread that love wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll have four lessons of the main event, and we're going to talk all about the Christmas story. So I'll see you again next week. Bye.